Hi, and we're here again with another uh, Book 8 Malevolence review of The White Scars. And this is brought to you by Bad Tabletop Gaming. Uh, I'm Bill. I'm joined with Craig and Andy again. And we're going to be going through a bit of the book for you. And I'll get uh, Craig to start it off. All right, so I'm going to start off with the, the basic rules um, of The White Scars. Uh, I'm going to skip the Legion of Stars. We all know what that's all about. Uh, we're going to start with Swift Action. On any turn in which the unit with this special rule ends its movement phase with it phase at least six inches or twelve if it's a unit of bikes or jet bikes from its point of its beginning of the phase, it may un it may until the beginning of the controlling player's next turn re-roll wound uh, to wound rolls of one with all attacks. That's pretty a pretty good. big thing. It's yeah. pretty good. Like, I mean that's that's forcing you to Move forward constantly, and it says all attacks. So that's assault and shooting. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. That's 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 huge. Yeah. Might as well have uh, preferred enemy. Everything it definitely plays into the fluff of white scars being uh, like that lightning strike force, always mm. surging forward. So mm. that's yeah, awesome. It would be a lot of moving around the board to get that bonus. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. I like that one. Um, I have the storm, renowned for their ability to arrive unannounced and unexpected. The White Scars use their mobility to dictate the flow of any battle in which they fight. Any army whose warlord has the Legion of Stardust White Scar special rule adds plus one to their result for seizing the initiative, as well as the as well as the first reserve roll of each turn. That also is pretty good <laughs> for a strike, pretty much, right? Yeah, yeah, you're you're. That's kind of kind of what we're sitting at for that. And, and I mean, with the adding plus one to their uh, rolls for reserve, that's negating like augury webs and you know a lot of the ultramarine special rolls where they're taking giving those negatives. Yeah, it's just a counterbalance. I mean, their reserves are most likely going to be coming in on the board. Yeah, they'll probably have a fair bit of them, right? Like, well, yeah, you think? I mean, you're looking what turn two? You're rolling on twos. Without any modifier, negative modifiers? Yeah. yeah. That's huge. That's yeah. almost a guarantee. Right? For sure. Uh, laughing in the face of death, any army whose primar primary detachment has the Legion of Stars White Scar special rule uh, may not select more heavy support choices than fast attack choices. This special rule does not apply to playing Zone Mortalis missions. I mean, that's that's kind of given Seems there. Seems pretty basic, like... Fluff wise, anyway. Yeah, you're not going to see a whole lot of turn or uh, Spartans, Land Raiders, any artillery weapons with them. So, and the last one, born in the saddle, all models with the Legion of Sardis White Scar special rule and bikes uh, rule, and the bikes and the bike or jet bike type have the skill special uh, rider rule. That's a change from Book Six, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, book six. It was every everyone in the army in here. It just seems like it's yeah, bikes and jet bikes that get the bonus. You can definitely see that they're definitely going with a bike heavy. Uh, yeah, it's kind of where it's fine too, right? Which is well, I mean, it's very very that's fluffy. That's what white scars pretty mm -hmm. much is, right? So. Yes, for sure, yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's go with Legion specific war gear. Um, Legion Space Marine Shamshire jet bike. I think I said that right. I may have butchered that. I don't know. Uh, any independent character with the Legion of Stardust White Scar special rule, which has access to the to a Skimtar, uh, yeah, Skimtar jet bike uh, with a heavy bolster, may instead take a Sham Shamshir jet bike with a scatter bolt launcher for the same point cost. Legion Space Marine Shamshir bike operate under the same standard rules for jet bikes found in the Horus Heresy uh, rule book. Any characters. Any character models that select the Shamshir jet jet bike has the option for both plus one toughness or improve its armor save to two plus if it's lower than this. Okay, mm, so option to gain both. Okay, well, so same thing, pretty same much. Shame. But we're going to be looking at their uh, the what is it, Scatterbolt? Yeah, Scatterbolt. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of an interesting. Yeah, it's kind of a, a cool weapon. That's later on in the book. Though, yeah, so we'll get there. Okay, Power Glaive. Any character with the Legion of Sardis White Scar special rule have access to a power weapon has the option to may, may instead take the Power Glaive for 25 points. That's expensive. Hefty. Nice. Hefty, but the point points may be overruled. Uh, power Glaive. Its range, its range is melee. Strength is user or plus one. It has two profiles. 
It's AP3 or 2, depending on his profile. Uh, melee and versatile. Versatile. A weapon with this type uses its first strength and AP value on the profile if the wielder is using one-handed alongside another item or war gear. That would give you their plus one, uh, plus one attack. The second strength and AP value are used through use though if it's being used as a two-handed special weapon. Yeah. Uh, thoughts? This seems like a similar other weapon, maybe. The, maybe the, the sights for uh... the Empress Children. Well, those sights are just minus one initiative at. What is it? I can't remember the power sights now. But it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it just it, gives you options. It gives you options. You basically, if you're using two handed, you're dropping a attack, but getting AP two at initiative. That's huge. Oh, it's really good. It's very comparable. It almost seems better than the Glaive for Night Lords, mm. I would say. I, I agree, too. I, I think this this weapon's almost a almost a must-take on your characters. I mean, the point cost is heavy, but I feel like it's all the way when you're killing Terminators at initiative. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 25 points isn't something to really slot back, considering it's the same points as a Paragon Blade, but... It uh, it can be pretty good, I think. Would you would you take this over a Paragon Blade on your Praetor? I think to keep with the feel of the army, I probably would. Um, mm. I just like having the options. If you want to butcher Marines, you can use it one-handed. Extra attacks if you're going after Terminators. AP2 mm. gives you the, at least best of both worlds. Paragon yeah. Blade is it's more versa- the same. It's more versatile, I think. Uh, I think more I, I you know you're looking at your consoles I'd be looking more putting on my consoles rather than my like even like with my dark angels maybe it's the supporting consoles yeah like yeah that. a supporting console not a champion but like a chaplain so, I mean, if you're, or you're, librarian your praetor gets stuck in combat I mean that paragon blade is, is still pretty nice right mm-hmm. so. it's true fluff wise I mean it's a great weapon the point cost is a little heavy but I feel like I think I, I feel like it's better than a power fist on a sergeant now, does it say independent characters only? Any character with Legion of Sardis white scars. So, I mean, you can see this on sergeants. Yeah. That's dangerous on a sergeant. Because that's giving him versatility that, you know, a lot of other sergeants aren't going to have, right? Well, he should be able to fight Terminator units or anything. Yeah. He's at, least, armor. he's at least going to be able to get the chance to kill those Terminators. If he has a power fist, I mean, he's going at the same time as them, and he's just as good as dead. Yeah. So... Uh, you're getting rid of them. Okay, so next up, uh, Cyberhawk. This is uh, re- this is represented by a small token or model, which is placed by the owning player at the beginning of the turn. The token can be placed anywhere on the table. It may physically sit and may be moved, may be moved anywhere at the beginning of each turn or each of the owning player's turn. Any unit with infantry type with the Legion of Stars White Scar special rule that is firing upon an enemy. Unit which has at least one model within six inches of the token may re roll to hit rolls of one. Okay. Any such units assaulting such, uh, any such units assaulting such an enemy may re roll the dice to determine the charge range. The counter represents the Cyberhawk plays no other role in the game and may not be attacked or attack or block line of sight, etc. Any Legion Praetor model with the Legion of Sirius White Scar special rule may take sing- a single Cyberhawk for 10 points. Thoughts, guys? 10 points to reroll my charge range? Pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> Pretty I, good. I, feel, I feel like it's... I mean, they're, they're already getting that swift action. Or not, yeah, swift action rule, right? Where they're already rerolling their ones. To wound, though. To wound, yeah. So, so, now, this attack, so, so. this now pretty much is giving you preferred enemy. Yeah. If you're within range of that Cyberhawk. Yeah, because yeah. that's re-rolling. One's the hit. One's, one's the hit, hit yeah. right? One's the hit from the Cyberhawk. One's re-rolling, one's the wound. Swift action. Uh, pretty ba- good. Yeah, basically, not bad at all. Basically, one's, you're re-rolling ones if you're taking a cyber Cyberhawk, right? Yeah. And then you get And then you can, yeah. The re yeah. of the... That's the that charge. Really, I don't know how many times... I think that re-rolling of the charge is... is is, 10 points like you said is worth that's it. that's huge yeah. right well i i think like when, when i look at this i'm like it just it makes 
you're almost guaranteeing to get that assault off and you're almost guaranteeing to inflict maximum damage if you have that cyberhawk nearby mm -hmm. you've moved your 12 inches your max distance that's huge like they're going to be very killer in assault i think yeah oh that's so praetors would be it's great a must in oh, the yeah. army right yeah. yeah praetor on a jet bike with so. backup yeah they're, they're going to be dangerous i guess that's uh why they molded the white scars praetor with the hawk on his arm mm. so that plays out perfectly so yeah it does quite it nice does. it does i like it i like them i like this rule it's quite interesting moving on with the white scars rights of war uh going over the uh Trigorian Brotherhood. It's an interesting ride of war. Uh, ride like the wind. Sky Hunter and Outrider bikes gain troop. Special rule. Uh, pretty good. They do count as scoring at that point, which is really nice to make thematic style armies, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lightning Strike is it's built around a core of mounted legionnaires. The Brotherhoods of the White Scars use these troops as dedicated shock troops, while the slower elements of the Brotherhood encircled the enemy and took up positions to support the breaches opened up by the brethren. So, noting some of the special rules that they get from this, uh, all models with the bike or jet bike uh, type gain hit and run, which is mm. super good. You control the flow of the Super assault. good. Um, yeah, sure. Any infantry unit that does not begin play aboard a vehicle with the transport type or any vehicle with more than three hull points that does not have the fast type must begin in reserve for that mission. Uh, that's actually pretty thematic, I think. Mm -hmm. It pretty much plays up to that heavier armor is gonna be in the rear as all the bikes and speeders come ripping in. And like it says in the little fluff description, opening up those spots for their brothers to come rolling in with the heavier vehicles. I think with that rule, I mean, it's just saying that your land raiders, your Spartans, they're gonna be in reserve. And it does, it does it does fit that thematic like the bikes are so far ahead of the rest of the army that that stuff is coming in later, yeah. but I mean you're still looking at coming in on twos most okay. of the time. Yeah. It could with that red war it could um, kind of adjust the way people build their armies, right? Because mm -hmm. not everybody sure. wants to have a good you know a, a decent amount of their army in reserve. No. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can see there being a lot of just fast hitting fast moving um, units in rhinos, yeah. anything in that description pretty much there. So Well, one of the things I take away from that rule is it's not saying you can't have land raiders and Spartans, yeah. but it's definitely, you're, you can have them, but they're coming in later. Yeah, I mean, yeah exactly. Well, hmm. oh, that's great. Uh, also, uh, continuing on, uh, any infantry unit in which there are no models equipped with heavy, salvo, or ordnance weapons gain the hit and run and outflank special rules. So I'm really starting to see the picture here of this massive force that's just encircling your opponent on the table and you're coming at them from all directions, especially with some of the mobility that we talked about like um, earlier, you know, with their swift action rule and you're really trying to keep the momentum high. I, I just think that these rules are gonna just combo up quite well. Mm -hmm. um, also, any unit with the infantry type that contains one or more models arms with the weapon Heavy, salvo, or ordnance gains the outflank. So no matter what you're taking, pretty much you're going to be able to outflank with your whole army, which mm. that's pretty good. Uh, that's huge. Outflank is huge. Yeah, it's flank hit. That's, that's great. Definitely. Just, oh, that's just it coming at you from, like you said, all, all sides. Yeah. All sides. You're, you're defending yourself from all sides at this point. Some of the limitations to this right of war and... This one, this one, we're gonna touch base on later in this book because this is important. Mm -hmm. So remember this part: the army's warlord must be mounted on a space marine bike or a scimitar jet bike. That's gonna come up later, so park that one away. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All your compulsory troops must either be sky hunter or outrider units, which that's fine because they become troops anyways. Uh, the army may not have more than one heavy support choice. Is that really crippling? I'm not sure. I, I really think the fast attack slots and more of the elites and troops are going to be where this right of war shines, personally. Um, and then it also has, like uh, most of the other rights of war, uh, jet bikes or bikes, if all of them are removed from the battlefield as casualties, the opponent player gains D3 victory points. Hmm. So you do have kind of that uh, 
same thing when you're taking uh, Pride of the Legion and you're losing all your bets and Terminator, stuff like that. It, it's at least gives you, there's a double-edged sword to having all the goodies, right? Mm -hmm. There's always got to be something. Yeah, for sure. Um, overall, I think that Riot of War is just it, awesome. It's, it's killer, but there's, like, it just means with, with the limitations, you're going to be very selective on what your heavy support's going to be. Yeah. That's going to be huge. It's going to have to fit your army because if you just, you know, have a random thing of random heavy support, I mean, it's just not going to work out for you. But I mean, overall, the whole thing works it really is, well. Yeah. It, going back to that heavy support, it all depends. Like, you know, you got that Spartan option, right? It is a transport. Mm -hmm. so can carry something. Yeah. But you also have some nice Sakarans out there too, which are fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which yeah. can support your other units with some of that firepower and, and whatnot. Right? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. For sure, yeah. Moving on to the second uh, specific right of war for White Scars. This one's interesting. It's White Scars and Shattered Legions. So it's a unique right of war for either. Mm. It is called the Sagir Mezin. Um, right of war may only be taken by a master of the Legion with the Legion Stardust White Scars, special rule, and only then when he is leading an army assembled using the Shattered Legions of Age of Darkness theme presented on 202 uh, Horus Heresy Book 6. Interesting, considering some of the effects in the game. Death Seekers, at the end of the game, in which victory points are used to determine the winner, roll a d6 for every unit with the Legion of Stardis White Scars rule uh, in this attachment that have been destroyed, and in doing so, yielded victory points to the opponent. I'm assuming so, a kill point type game. On a roll of a 4 or 5, no victory points are awarded, and while on the roll of a 6, the victory points are awarded to the owning side's additional point pool. So on a four or five, you get no points, and on a six, I get the point back. Which mm. that's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, kind of lets different. you just throw them into the fray with zero disregard. Yeah, pretty neat. Um, Serpent's Eye. All models with the Legion of Stardis White Scar special rule are fearless for the first turn of any assault. That might be really, um, really good, especially if you're going to combo up with. Uh, like a counter hammer unit, uh, you just want to tie the guy for one turn. Yeah, that can be really good, I think. Yeah, getting a tactical squad in there, holding up a Death Star of some sort, so yeah. your major stuff comes in. So yeah. they got one guy in there. Yeah, one, one guy. guy. Yeah. 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 They're not going anywhere. No, that's that's a pretty interesting right of war, actually. Um, the limitations for this right of war: this right of war may only be used by a loyalist army. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the army may never contain more vehicles than it has units with the infantry type, which not a big, big deal either. I think, um, sure. most armies are probably gonna have a lot of infantry, especially with some of the white scar rules that they get. Mm -hmm. I expect to see quite a bit of infantry anyways. This, this word of war can be very thematic. Like you can have some very killer combinations, especially with the shattered legion rules. Oh you know, yeah. Raven guard, or yeah, Raven guard with them or any one of those. You know, they, you could fill in the where the white scars lack yeah. with a good unit from some from other. Legions. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Just combo up some of the different abilities and really try. I think, I think the white scars shattered legion right of war. This cigar mezzan is kind of going to be a sleeper one. Mm -hmm. um, most people are probably going to use the other one, the Chagorian Brotherhood, but I think this second one's going to be a little bit of a sleeper. Well, yeah, this this one has a lot of potential to be. Yeah. Taken advantage of I and so. very thematic at all at the same time. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, looking into the uh, first unit in this uh, White Scar section here, the Golden Kasheg. I think I pronounced that right. But um, they're pretty much uh, heavy assault jet bikes squads. Uh, they look pretty, pretty expensive. Uh, 160 points for three. That's a little pricey. A little pricey. Mm -hmm. uh, weapon skill 5. Toughness of 5. Really, that's the main difference in a 2 plus save. So, yeah. pretty good. Pretty good. Um, they have, uh, well, they're jet bikes. Um, they're champion. They're no difference in that, except for the one extra attack. And give you a rundown of their war gear. Uh, Artist for armor. They've uh, got a chain, sword, or con blade, bolt pistol, frag grenade, the usuals. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a Contos Power Lance. Uh, that'll be an interesting one to look at. 
and uh, we'll do the description right now for it and pretty much it's a power lance uh, melee range strength of seven slash user and then we also have an AP of two uh, slash four uh, so melee two-handed sunder cumbersome murder strike and concussive now there's a couple of um, different things about these all these rules that they get so pretty much on the turn which the bear has charged they'll be using the first value so your strength seven and ap2 um, on any other turn they'll use the second value um, these yeah these special rules only apply when they charge and what it is is they have sunder and murder strike so when they charge that's when they get those rules mm -hmm. right so strength seven not bad AP2, not bad. murder they're strike be, they're cumbersome gonna, with that sunder they're gonna be taking out light vehicles like vehicles um it really seems like a terminator hunter unit mm, yeah that, that, that initial strike yeah. yeah so so here's the thing with the cumbersome as well is it can only ever make one single attack in any given assault phase however on the turn that the bear is charged the attack is only automatically made at initiative 10. Ooh. That's huge. That's really good. So you don't want to you don't want to assault them. Well, they're they're assaulting right more than likely, right? right? So like they're a jet bike squad. I mean, with all the other rules that you're getting. So that's like character hunting then. Like yeah. you charge this squad in, they're all getting an attack at initiative ten, strength seven AP two, that's with murder strike. Yeah, that's mm. pretty good actually. So you're gonna see two wound terminators going down to them quite easily yeah they they have their place because i mean they're i mean you can take out characters uh vehicles they can definitely hurt with the no oh, dreadnoughts are going to sunder be right easy victims for them so yeah. pretty good um so their their bike it's uh white scars shamshir jet bike it has a scatterbolt launcher mm -hmm. and the scatterbolt launcher is a template weapon with strength five and AP four, assault one, shred and pinning. So it's a flamer. Pretty much a heavy flamer. Yeah. With shred. With shred. With shred. Yeah. So I can see where it has its place for sure. Um, strength five flamers are nothing to <laughs> nothing no. to laugh at. No. no. Yeah, we're going to be wounding your basic space marines on a three. And with shred, I mean, you're re-rolling those ones and twos. And if you get charged, mm. yeah, wall of fire. Well, that's a wall it can of happen, fire. right? Mm. The template, so that's yeah. that's that's pretty good. That's not bad at all. It's, it's actually, a, it's a nice, nice looking unit. It's gonna have its place for sure. Yeah. yeah. It also has hit and run. So charge in, do your damage, make, yeah. make yeah. your roll for hit and run. Tip out, yeah. No. Yeah. You're pretty so good. You might be able to do it again, you know, if, if you're still alive. Yeah. But <laughs> nice thing, good. AP four. It's AP four doesn't get enough spotlight in Heresy because it's all power armor mostly. But if you've ever faced a field full of mindless thralls, or you mm. know, just a board full of just militia. tons of militia, AP four shines. Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just, I, this is this feels like a, a more of a glass hammer unit, like. Like they're going to do a lot of damage the turn they assault. Yeah. But if they get prolonged or tar pitted, then they're they can at least jump out. That's the great thing about them. You're not going to get tar pitted by yeah. you know twenty thralls. Well, yeah. and that's just it. Like if you know you're stuck in combat and you do your hit and run and you come out and it's your turn. If you don't really have any of those targets to really hit with your power lance, I mean that scatterbolt launcher template yeah he's oh. gonna do some work oh yeah right so five of them on a, on a normal tactical squad it's going to kill some guys yes oh, for sure definitely you know the odds are in your favor so yeah. um so they they do have other options for weapons um so they can 
take an additional three riders. Uh, they're 40 points each, so they're up there. Uh, they also can exchange their chain swords for power weapons at 10 points. The whole squad can take melt bombs. Oh, mm, that's always nice. 25. That's kind of nice because if you max out your squad, you're still only paying 25 points, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, then also the champion can exchange his weapon for a thunder hammer, which is a normal... Thunder hammers are what, 20 points usually? 15, 20? 15, 20. I think, usually. But... Well, what, what is, I find interesting is because it says you can replace the power, the chainsaw or combat blade with the power weapon. So if you're going into the next round of assault, you can just switch to your power weapon. You're not, you're yes. not limiting with sure. being that one. You're getting, you're going to be getting more attacks that way. Because do they come with bolt pistols? Yes, they do. So they're going to be getting two attacks each. I mean, I, I if if I was in the like on the next set of um, uh, assault phase, I would be switching off that lance onto the onto a power weapon just so I get the volume of attacks. It's just nice to see, I guess, the versatility with the unit. Like I'm starting to just from the first squad here, and just from some of the points that their army gets, like rule wise, it, you're starting to really see the, there's like double duty almost for all these squads, which is nice. Yeah, I I still really think of them as like a like that character hunter, uh, primary hunter. If you can move, roll in with a full squad. Initiative ten, strength seven. Typically, you'll be wounding primarchs on threes, mm -hmm. mortarion on fours. But mm -hmm. that's good pretty point. good. AP two, like good not point. bad at all. Especially with the initiative. Yeah. Yeah, initiative ten point. is. Phew. Yeah. Everybody's getting plugged by that. So, oh, yeah. excellent. Moving on, Yevon Kashig. Uh, these are a Terminator squad. Uh, their starting points are 225 for 5 Karash. Uh, they are in Terminator armor uh, and they have power gloves. That's their war gear. Uh, the interesting thing is they can select what Terminator armor they want. That's nice. That is nice. Um, you're going to find some. this squad has some limitations. Um, special roles, Legion of Stardis, White Scars, Chosen Warrior. That's huge. I like that one. Stubborn, feel no pain, five plus the Karash, and their support unit. Support unit. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But we'll come into that in a second. Yeah. Their stat line is basic space marines: four weapon skill, four ballistic skill, four strength, four toughness, one wound, four initiative, two attacks, ten leadership, and a two plus save. Depending on what terminator armor they get, five or four plus is vulnerable. Um, they can take an additional five for 45 points each. That's, that's a hefty price. For Getting up there. A one room most, Terminator. Most main Terminators probably. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. But Close. I mean, for their stat line, but we'll get into it. They have their own special rule. Um, any model may exchange their power glaive for a power weapon and combi bolter for free. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why you would, but. Any mole may exchange their power glaive for a power fist and combi bolter for 10 points. Again, mm. looking after looking at the rules of the power glaive, I don't know if that would be worthwhile. So maybe one points. or two. So they only have a power glaive. They only have a power glaive. They have no, no shooting, no shooting. Unless, you, unless you upgrade them. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get any special. You're not going to get any special weapons. No. Now I will move on. It is just a combi bolter. Yeah. They can take a grenade harness for 10 points. That you're gonna want those those fried grenades if you're charging into yeah, any model, me. Yeah, any model, which is nice because they are chosen warriors. So technically, any one of them can accept the challenge. They're chosen warriors. Really? Oh wow! Yeah. So any one of yeah. them can. But I mean, there is no sergeant in the squad, so that makes that kind of makes sense. Uh, the power fist. I mean, the bolter. If you want to just have that extra strength, you know, if you're running into tanks or like like dreadnoughts you're not going to take a power leave against a dreadnought no uh and any model may exchange their combi bolter with a combi weapon for 15 points that's pricey i feel like they're trying so, to keep you yeah so i mean like if you're going for the power fist route you're paying 10 points for the power fist and combi bolter yeah and then if you want a specialized combi weapon you're paying an extra 15 points. So you're looking at 25 points to upgrade that guy. 
Yeah. Is it's worth probably it? not worth it. Maybe one or two power fists, sure. Um, nice thing about them though, leadership ten. Yep. That's better than nine, which most standard Terminator units, even Legion specific ones, have. So leadership ten is good. So now we're going to get into their special rule, uh, the Kara uh, the Karash. Any unit with this special rule never counts as a scoring unit. However, the enemy player may never score any victory points from the destruction of the unit with a special with this special rule, regardless of the scenario played or any victory conditions in effect. In addition, units with this special rule may not join, be joined by any model that does not have the Karash special rule. These guys are a suicide squad. They're suicide terminators. You're putting them in a uh, dreadclaw and you're dropping them down and you're throwing them. That's that's how I see them. They're, Interesting. They're expensive though. Yeah. They are pricey. Feel no pain. Five five plus is nice. It's better than uh, nothing. Iron hands six plus. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, the power glaive. I honestly think that's probably the weapon to use. I personally would take them with Tartarus Terminator armor. That speed, just because having the speed, being able to run, mm -hmm. being able to sweep, awesome. Not to mention the white scar rules that you get. Yeah, for, yeah, for moving. Yeah, all and, the time and, and rerolling your failed charge, all that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like these guys are almost. These guys would be killer, killer in a Zomortalis. Game, yeah. for sure um i also feel like they're like the inductee version the white the white world leaders inductees they they do have that feeling i'm kind of looking at them as like butchers mm -hmm. right um they can't score mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. butchers are kind of the same thing right mm -hmm. um but you basically no pain they have one less wound their weapons, they're they're also like hit on threes. Yeah, so <laughs> they have their place, I think. Yeah. They they so. definitely do, and I feel like throwing them in a, a dread claw, five of them in a dread claw, it's still a threat. But you're not going to give up a victory point. You're you're no. denying a victory point from your opponent, which is huge. Yeah, I mean, awesome. there's a lot of missions out there where victory points are a big thing. So, and yeah, so I, I think they're a good unit. They're a little overpriced, in my opinion. They might be a little overpriced. They all, they they might even actually be on par with what they should be point wise, um, depending. Like they're a lot cheaper than a lot of the other Legion specific ones mm -hmm. out there. Yeah. Um, they definitely have a certain role to play in the game. Oh, for sure. It's a different different style of unit, right? Because I mean, you don't really see a Terminator squad of any type as a support unit. No. So, mm -hmm. like Craig said, like. Suicide team, go in there, no, do some damage, send them against certain units. That's you'll see them on the board probably because of the cool factor for them. Yeah, with their I can't, weapons. I right? can't wait to see so the weapon. Fun. I mean, and I agree with Bill. Tartarus uh, pattern Terminator armor is definitely the way to go with these guys. Get them in there. Get them. Just even having them in your opponent's uh, deployment zone or in their in their army, they have to be a threat. They have to be. They have to deal with. If they don't. They're just looking at getting mulched. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. I'm going to slide over to the fast attack. Uh, mm -hmm. The Falcon's Claws. <laughs> Sound pretty cool. <laughs> Not to be mistaken with Mech Warrior, but yeah. Um, at first glance, kind of just a, looks like a regular scout unit. Um, five guys, 90 points. Generic, pretty much Space Marine uh, stats along the board. What makes this unit a little bit in interesting is uh, their Mekon armor. Their war gear is a pair of lightning claws. So it's kind of cool. They're moving into the Raven Guard turf, it feels like. Mm -hmm. uh, they have shroud bombs, which is also kind of cool. And the Cameline cloaks. Um, so they really seem to be that like legit like cloak and dagger. They're going to hide, infiltrate wherever they can. Um, some of the special rules that they have, though... Uh, Outriders, which it allows them to be uh, treated as if they have the scout special rule, but they may redeploy up to 18 inches regardless of its unit type, which is pretty neat. Um, it must still remain within at least 12 inches away from an enemy unit. 18 inch redeploys can be quite helpful. Uh, they do have move through cover, they do have precision strikes, and they have hatred characters. 
Very so interesting. I'm starting to see this is might almost be a like an assassin squad that you're wanting to use to pick off those support characters, consoles. Maybe not quite go toe to toe with the, an actual you know uh, Death Star, but uh, the smaller squads definitely can shred Marines, no problem. Oh, no. Um, yeah. Can take an additional five for sixteen points each. Not not terrible really. It's pretty much the salt Marine range. Um, a model and unit may exchange their pair of lightning claws for a power weapon and bolt pistol for free. So if you want to get rid of them, you can change out for free. That's it's not bad. They can take melt bombs, 20 points for the whole squad. It's not a bad use of points, really, considering I usually think, it's five points apiece. I think I'd stick with the claws and just yeah. take melt bombs. Yeah. 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 Uh, the Falcon's Claw Champion may take a Cyberhawk. Uh, so we're seeing that Cyberhawk again, rerolling the uh, Assault range. Mm -hmm. um, definitely seeing them as, yeah, you, you could really count them as like a counter Assault unit. You can tie tie a squad up, bring these guys in to really wrap up the rest of the charge. That could be really good in Assault for sure. Well, well they, they have to be a minimum of 12 inches away and have that 18 inch redeploy. Yeah. I mean, your Quad Mortar squad yeah. is now legitimately threatened. Yeah. I mean, and with the re-rolling charge distance, and they're already within 12, 12 inches, they're going to move up six, yeah. and then they they can charge. They're almost going to guarantee to get that charge off. No, yeah. and that's and with lightning claws, they're going to mulch marines. They're going to mulch, you know, power armor guys. Like there's no tomorrow. Yeah, they're definitely definitely feel like an all arounder unit. Um, the Falcons Claw Champion, they can exchange one of their claws for a thunder hammer, power fist, hand flamer. Plasma Pistol or Volkite Serpenta. Not horrible options, really. Um, I, I don't really see the need for Thunder Hammer or Power Fist if you're going to be rocking out Melta Bombs, personally. Yeah. See, and with that, like, they're char character hunters, right? Hatred characters? Yeah. You take the Thunder Hammer with one of them, with the champion. Yeah. If mm -hmm. you're stuck in combat with that character for, you know, like, another round, I mean, it, you're probably going to instant kill him with the Thunder Hammer anyways, yeah. but... Maybe some characters that have a higher toughness. Now it's true. Now they're those rules would help. Stunned, right? Think about how often people are taking um, artificial armor on their sergeants. Yeah. All of a sudden, that thunder hammer, that sergeant's he's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, that could be really good, actually. So I mean, I think this. I think this unit. This is a killer unit. It's a. I think it's kind of a scalpel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, like you could like. If I had that unit coming across at me with my Master of Signal, I mean, my Master of Signal is not a combat character, no. but he's going to get shredded by that in whatever unit I have him with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, right. agreed. A 10-man tactical squad, man, you might oh, as well yeah. just take him off the board. Like, these guys are going to be in their face before they have any time to react. Yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of them. I, yeah. I definitely agree with that. For 90 points for five guys, double lightning claws, and the redeploy up to 18 inches, you're not getting weapon vets like that cheap. No. And this squad's going to roll right through them for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, that's great. Like, I, I, I really like the precision strikes also can help if uh, there's that pesky apothecary in that squad that could exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> to take them out, right? That's yeah. pretty this, sweet. This squad is definitely an interesting squad. I, I mean, geez, it, it, has, it has some versatility to it yeah. that you don't normally see. And the point range is great, yeah. but they are going to be vulnerable to firepower. I mean, for sure, flamers. Flamers are going to do a number on them. Well, they have a, a chameleon. Yeah, chameleon. Yeah, cloaks. Yeah, so recon and armor four plus the cloak most likely going to be in cover. Yeah, so you should be able to hold your own. Probably around average of three plus depending. And, on and where they you have are. removed through cover, so yeah. any any disadvantages to being in cover are just out the window, right? Yeah. No, quite nice actually. Yeah. Nice unit. Shroud bombs also help. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Yeah, that's a great unit. Next up, we got uh, White Scars, Kaizagan, Salt Spear. Mm. So, 105 points. Fast attack choice, of course. Same stats as a regular spear. Uh, actually, no, except they have front armor of 12, not 11 like other spears. Mm. So, that's, yeah, and that's. These are these are based off the javelin. Yeah, uh, the javelin speeders. The javelin yeah. speeders. Yeah. So yeah, front armor of twelve. That's that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, they have Kiri's 
on their war gear, they have Curie's Pattern Assault Cannon and two Reaper Auto Cannons. Nice. So the DACA Speeder. Yeah, <laughs> fairly different compared yeah. to other speeders. Right? They, they are a little bit more expensive, though. Yeah. They are. They are. 105 points. Not too bad. Uh, they also have, for special rules, they have Deep Strike, Outflying, Strafe Run, and their Grav uh, Backwash. Which I believe is pretty much for standard, yeah. standard, standard for the for other all, speeders. Yeah. Uh, so the options that the Kazagan squadron may include up to a two additional speeders. So three for yeah, for 105 points per model. That's gonna be pretty pricey. A little pricey for sure. So, uh, they also can be equipped the following upgrades: just a searchlight and up to 100 killer missiles. Five points apiece. And unless the, well, the grab backwash, pretty much the general rule, they become immobilized. Unless they become immobilized, uh, attacker suffer a minus two hit in close combat. Hmm. Overall, so, not terrible, honestly, for weapons. Again, everything they've got for weapon wise is that AP4. Um, Reaper auto cannons are pretty good. So you're getting four shots from those, and the carries you're getting six. That's it's a DACA it, it's speeder, ten, ten it's shots. Ten, it's ten strength six or strength seven shots. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's versatile. It can you know you got your you can go after infantry effectively. Uh, it can go after like vehicles. Yep. Um, it seems like a jack of all trades and a master of none. Yeah, I I think myself I'd still stick with regular speeders javelins. In all honesty, I, yeah, I mean, 65 points, missiles, and a melt -a gun and your can opening up most yeah. heavy tanks, yeah. right? Um, I think that's kind of what makes other javelins shine. If, if this had access to um, cyclone missiles, I think this thing would be well, right up there, like top notch. Um, yeah. I take a carries over a multi melt myself. I just the I think strength shot. six rending mm -hmm. can be really good. Now, if this was. If this was the other way around, where it had two curious oh, yeah. cannons, yeah. I think I would take that instead. Mm. Right? But it doesn't, yeah. so not not I mean, one of my favorite units in it, in the section. But I mean, like I've I've seen the model um, from the Weekender. It's a, a great looking model. I really yeah. I really like it. As for the point cost versus a normal javelin, is it worth it? I I don't think it is. Oh, it's pretty, pretty high. Yeah, Maybe it's, it's high forty for points. It's, it's right. forty points more than a uh, javelin with cyclone missile launchers yeah. and a multi melt. Uh, front armor twelve. Yeah, I mean, that's which is isn't bad actually. At least you know um, they're not going to be just pot shotted at by heavy bolters just trying to glance a regular javelin out. Mm. So the armor in twelve is probably the saving grace of it. Um, honestly, you probably have to see it on the board. Just to see actually yeah, what it does. Exactly. I feel like it's more of a good crowd controlling uh, unit over anything, in yeah. my opinion. No, I agree. Okay, up next we have Quinn Za. I, I'm pr pretty sure I could be butchering this. He is a Praetor level special character for the White Scars. Uh, he's 220 points, so he's up there, but he's got a lot of special rules to go with that. Uh, his weapon skill is 6, ballistic skill 4, strength 4, toughness 4, 4 wounds. Oh, 4 wounds. Mm. Initiative 6, 5 attack space, 10 leadership, and a 2 plus save. He is a uh, infantry unit. He His war gear is a Tartarus Terminator armor, iron halo, grenade harness, and tails of the dragon. Special rules, Legion of Stars White Scars, Independent Character, Master of the Legion, Counterattack, Furious Charge, Master of the Kashyyyk, Warlord, if Quinza is your uh, army's warlord, he has he has the chosen of the Kashag trait rather than rolling randomly. And that's gonna be later on in his warlord trait. Okay, so Master of the Kashyyyk. In the army that includes Quinza may select the Legion Command Squad of Terminator Bodyguard upgraded to represent the Kashyyyk. The unit does not use up an HQ slot. Any model in the unit 
to represent the Kashig may replace their power weapon with a power glaive for 10 points. Uh, if the option is used, the unit represented with Kashig must deploy with Quinza as part of the unit during deployment at the start of the game. So that's interesting. Mm. That could be a very deadly unit because Crunch oh, yeah. is bodyguard. Yeah, it's bodyguard. So. Yeah. Tales of the Dragon. Tales of the Dragon is a are two separate Dale blades used together as a matched pair. The bonus for wielding two melee weapons has already been included in Quinn Zah's profile. As a master of any form forms associated with the use of exotic weapons, Quinn Zah may employ different modes of attack. Ooh, interesting. When attacking with the Tails of the Dragon in close combat, select one of the profiles to use from the sh from those shown at the start of each controlling player's assault phase before any attacks are made. So I'm going to go over his two fighting profiles, I guess you could say. So he's got Split the Mountain, which is Strength plus 3, AP 2, Melee, Unwieldy, Master Crafted, and he's got uh, part of the horse's mane, which is plus one strength, AP2, melee, precision strike, master crafted. That's very interesting. Wow. That's some good uh, options. That's yeah. some really good options. <laughs> Amazing options, honestly. Uh, I mean, he's... Wow. It sounds like he's like a weapon master. Yeah, mm. you know? definitely. Uh, we're going to move on to his warlord trait, and we'll come back to the... The insane weapon profiles he has. Uh, if uh, Quinza is the army's warlord, once per game, the controlling player may choose to either bring a single eligible friendly unit into play from reserve automatically instead of rolling, or have it remain in reserve for that turn. So that's pretty wicked. So your key unit, like he just brings in a unit. So one, so your heavy support unit. That has to go into reserve because it doesn't. Can fit. Just, you can just say it comes in turn two. Fit yeah. the profile. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Could be you really can just good. Say it comes in turn two. Really good. But that was only for that right of war. Yeah. Yeah, it's for his right of war. His specific okay. right of war. Yeah. Or uh, warlord trait, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking. Like he combo that with the Chigorian Brotherhood. Mm hmm. Pretty nice. He needs to be on a bike, doesn't he? Uh, oh, yeah, he does. So that he does. Uh, I think he really worked well in the that yeah, the Shadow Legion Shadow one. Legion White Scar. Ooh, that, some killer combos with that. He could really do good. What I really like about him is uh, four wounds is not very common for Praetors. Mm. Um, the only other one that I know about is uh, a raw red blade from Book Seven. Mm -hmm. um, but being initiative six, five attacks is. Six on the charge. Awesome. Like, yeah, when you're charging, six attacks. Myself, I know what weapon style I would be picking. Um, I'd be rocking out part the horse's mane. Just because strength 5, AP 2, precision strike master crafted, you're really going to take advantage of that initiative. Mm -hmm. um, strength 7, unfortunately, you probably won't be doing any instant death. But, uh, hey, like, four wounds, at least you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe in combat for quite some time. But if he gets locked into combat with, say, a Contemptor Dreadnought, yeah. suddenly he has the ability to get himself out of that problem. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Glance the sheer volume up. attacks, he's gonna do something to it, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, again, I agree with you. Part the horse's mane, definitely the, the one I'd be focusing on. Yeah, it, it all depends. Like, you take his bodyguard, mm. and his bodyguard, you, you're gonna be able to equip however you need. However you right? need, yeah. So... It's a good possibility, of and but even situational of mm -hmm. what you're going to use. For having him, those so. having those glaives too, they're still a great weapon. Yeah. And I feel like he could be. I feel like we could see him if you're not, if they're not running a a bike, the bike rider war. Yeah. I feel like you're going to see him because he is a a standout character for me right. so far. And he has, he has furious charge. Right? Furious charge, uh, counter attack. So even when he gets charged. Oh, wow. Okay, so well. He's getting his full so number of attacks. Furious Charge changes it. Disregard what I said then. Um, oh. Split the Mountain. Furious Charge, if he's getting the charge off, he'll be Strength 8 with 6 attacks. Mm. That's different. Um, if you're not getting the charge, 
part the horse part the horse's main I think is still good because you're getting that counter attack. Yeah. But yeah, if you're getting the charge up with like Fury's mm. charge, strength eight, six attacks. That's uh, it is it is really good. it is unwieldy. Um, so you're gonna be going on initiative one. It's but okay though. That's still six strength eight attacks because the like bodyguard. He, it's like he has a power fist. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, the bodyguard with the glaives are the ones that are gonna help you. Yeah. While you're waiting to go to initiative yeah. one. At, at the end of the day, I mean, having two weapon profiles is huge. And it, it kind of plays, I think, both ways, right? You yeah. can play him with part the horse's mane, and he could be the one dealing the damage to killing off some of the unit's yeah. models. Mm -hmm. And then your bodyguards come in with the fists. Yeah, because, right? yeah, you could build your Legion command squad however you really want. Yeah. So. I, I mean, at the end of the day, the two weapon profiles means he is. There's no situation where he's not going to shine. Mm. If he's he's not going to get tar pitted as easily with the number of attacks he's got. He's if he gets into combat with something that's, you know, like two yeah. wound terminators, he's still going to be he's able really, to. Really, really good. I like him. Like, I, I like really him a lot like too. He's he's almost like a super uh, tribune uh, praetor. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he's still rocking the iron hail for the two plus four plus, which. Awesome. Yeah. Right. And I mean, he's in, he's in the Tartarus Terminator armor. So you're getting so, all the benefits of running and sweeping. With none of the negatives. With no negatives. With the 5+. plus. So yeah, he's like the Super Tribune, basically. That's really good. Yeah, he's an awesome character. I really like him. Can't wait to see more of him. Definitely. So, wow. Continuing on with the next uh, character for White Scars. Solomon Khan. Um, an interesting character. Uh, Praetor level again. Uh, weapon skill 6, explosive skill 5, strength 5, base, which that will come into play in a little bit here. Toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 5, 4 attacks, leadership 10, 2 plus armor. Uh, general, regular stats. Uh, war gear, artificer armor, a master crafted thunder hammer mm. with base strength of 5. Pretty good. Uh, combi melta, bolt pistol, iron halo. So rocking that two plus four plus. Uh, his special rules: um, independent character, master of the legion, the hammer hand. So moving into the hammer hand. On any turn which Solomon Khan has successfully charged an enemy unit, the controlling player may choose to instead of making his normal allotment of close combat attacks, may instead make a single attack using Khan's master crafted thunder hammer at normal initiative, ignoring the unwieldy rule. So on the charge, this guy can have one strength 10 initiative five attack, which pretty decent depending on what you're fighting, right? Or he can have five strength 10 attacks at initiative one, depending on how you want to roll with it. Um, I think one of the things it's pretty good to point out is if he gets that one hit, he's now concussing whatever he hits. Yeah. So he can nerf nerf someone fighting him yeah. and the next round go with his one. four attacks at strength initiative 10, initiative 101. One. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of the interesting options for him, um, Solomon Khan may be mounted on a scimitar jet bike with heavy bolter. Uh, he gets bumped up to toughness five at that point, which I, I honestly personally think is an auto, like you must throw him on his jet bike, just if you're crazy not to. Oh. Um, Couple of little things as well. Um, if he's not mounted on the scimitar jet bike, then this unit may also include. So he can he can purchase a sister of silence, a single model, uh, oblivion knight centura for seventy five points. Um, not a horrible thing, really, if you want to get some of that anti psyker um, power coming off. What I really like about him, um, you can combo this guy up with. Those assault bikes that we were talking about earlier in this, where you could have a squad of three fly in at initiative 10 with their strength 7 AP2 yep. power lances, and then this guy either has to clean up at initiative 5 with one strength 10 attack, or he cleans up at initiative 1 with five strength 10 attacks. Like, I really think you can get some wicked like mm. assault unit combos with this character. Yeah, some of the. Uh, like there, that could be a hard hitting squad. Yeah, like it's all well, yeah, strength ten on that one attack, right? Yeah. Or, or strength, ten, strength ten regular. Yeah. So like, if those the jet the jet bikes there, the uh, 
salt bikes. Yeah. And they don't take out whatever they're assaulting. Yeah. He's going to do some damage, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe they do do enough damage that they don't kill the target and yeah. it comes in with that. Yeah. That, that unit with him on that Denator is not going to last. No, no set a chance. And all that for 180 points. Well, how much is the bike? Bike is 30 points. So 210 mm -hmm. points. That's a pretty good assault character. Uh, personally, like I think he's really, really good. Uh, a different role compared to the previous character, the Quinza. Um, but Solomon Khan definitely has some really good things about him. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would definitely not underplay this character at all. Like He's got really good abilities. That strength five base is just, to me, is huge. Yeah, yeah. Does he have his own warlord trait? He does. Uh, his warlord trait, it's plain Jane. Uh, he gets inspiring presence. Instead of rolling to determine, he gets this inspiring presence warlord trait from the regular book. Not a horrible trait, but uh, I'm willing to overlook the plain Jane trait just for that strength 10 Thunder Hammer. Mastercraft is Thunder Hammer. Is the... Uh... The other option there with six here. Yeah. Really worth it. I don't know. It it really depends though. Um with mm -hmm. demons coming out, it could be worth it. It may. This is true. There's a lot of gonna be a lot of psyker stuff coming out uh against Thousand Suns, it could be really useful. Yeah. So uh, I can read a little bit about that ally of the silent order. A single sister of silence, oblivion knight, Centura, may be selected as part of Solon Khan's unit, as long as he is not mounted on a scimitar jet bike. At the start of the game during deployment, these two models must remain part of the same unit. After they've been deployed on the battlefield, they may uh, operate as separate independent characters. So that's not a horrible thing. In addition, Solon Khan does not reduce his leadership value due to proximity to models with the Psychic Anathema Special Rule. And if he uses the Glorious Intervention Special Rule to intercede in a challenge involving a friendly Sister of Silent character, then he gains an additional attack for the duration of the challenge. If this is used in the same turn as the Hammer Hand Special Rule, that's the initial 5 strength 10 attack, the one, one timer, then the plus 1 attack bonus may be used to increase the attacks made from 1 to 2. So that's actually not terrible. Um, for 75 points for her though, I personally would rather take the bike. I just think the mobility alone, um, toughness five, getting the jink, being able to ride with the uh, Chikorian Brotherhood right of war, like if there's a lot of combos there I think you would miss out on if you took the Sister of Silence, but that's personal opinion. So. Yep. I think you'll see him more so on the jet bike. Yeah, I, I think just the stat line really changes just from doing the jet bike. I mean, you got weapon skill six, you got uh, how many wounds does he have? Three? Three. Three is initiative five, but he's strength five, toughness five. Like that's, that's a, that puts him, that makes him harder to kill, it makes him more killy himself. Like yeah. he's got a lot of potential to be a great character. Yeah, he does. So I can see him, yeah. I can see a lot of him being used. Yeah, definitely. Jagged High Khan is uh, quite the interesting Primarch, that is for sure. So to start off, um, he's Got two profiles, so on foot and mounted. Uh, weapon skill seven, bullet skill six, strength six. Toughness six when he's on foot. Uh, when he's mounted, it's seven. Wounds of six. He's initiative eight on foot and initiative seven uh, when he's mounted. Uh, attacks are six, the issue of ten, of course, and two plus save. He's like we said before, two profiles. He has a jet bike character, unit type, or infantry character, unit type. And going to the war here. So we'll uh, start off with the con on foot, uh, the wildfire panoply. And we'll let uh, Craig take over here. All okay, right, uh, the wildfire panoply. Uh, fashion to be aesthetically pleasing. It is, it was impregnable that, impregnable that the Khan of Mount Armor perfectly com complemented his fast and uncompromising style of warfare and bore a number of unique systems to improve his already unmatched reflexes. The Wildfire Panoply provided a 2 plus armor save and a 5 plus invulnerable save during shooting phase 
and a three plus environmental save during the assault phase. That's huge. It's awesome. Including when targeted by Overwatch attacks. So when you're getting shot up when going into combat, you still got that three plus. In addition, it grants the con the move through cover special rule. Well, that's good. Pretty good. I wonder if I could track this in the I don't know. Maybe. Hmm. So his next piece of war here is the White Tiger Tao. Okay, um, sorry. Yeah. So it's a close combat weapon. It's uh, kind of got two profiles. Uh, okay, so the White Tiger Dao, range melee, plus one strength slash user, AP2, uh, melee duelist edge master crafted. Um, it has an asterisk on any turn in which the Jahat Khan cha charges, use the first value on any other turn, use the second value. So he on the charge is, right, so not bad, not bad, not bad, not bad at all. So. A different type of uh, yeah, it's weapon a, for, for a primer. Yeah, it's not the over the top weapons that we usually see. No. And he also has the uh, Archaeotech pistol and frag grenades. Mm -hmm. Basic armor. Basic yeah. normal. Yeah. Uh, so the con mounted war gear. Uh, pretty much the same as we talked about before. Except for the. Except he's got a very special sujitsu pattern void bike. Um, void bike costs him 65 points, bumps him up to 460. Not a horrible trade off considering he's getting extra toughness. And initiative 7, you're still faster than almost everybody out there. Minus a couple of prime marks, but you don't worry about those things. <laughs> so I'm just going to read the pattern void bike about what its rules are and what it kind of pertains and then we'll talk about some more. Just want you to remember when we were talking about that right of war. Remember this part. The army's warlord must be mounted on a space marine bike or a scimitar jet bike. So Chicken Icon retains a specially engineered version of his prototype vehicle for his own use. It's enhanced thrusters capable of carrying him into battle with a swiftness equal to lesser mounts. Increases his toughness by plus one, which is still really good. Toughness seven is great. My target is probably jealous. Let's <laughs> put him on a jet bike. It's armed with two master crafted heavy bolters. Not horrible. Heavy bolters aren't bad at all. Uh, when the count is, con is mounted, it also makes Hammer of Wrath attacks, but he inflicts D3 instead of one. Um, it's pretty good. The big glaring issue with this, though. It is not a scimitar jet bike. Yes, it is. Or a. It is a mounted jet bike. But it's not a scimitar jet bike. Does it specifically say scimitar? S specifically. And wow. it's not a space marine bike. That's interesting. So, rules as written, right now, he cannot join that right of war. I think it's a really glaring issue of what maybe rules as written, rules as intended, mm -hmm. but rules as written. Can't join that right of war. Simply removing scimitar. Scimitar would be would fine, be. but it's just it might be an oversight. I'm Hopefully, sure we'll probably see an FAQ on this. Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. It's you can't even take him in this this the right of war that his army is designed around. Like, it just yeah, seems it, it seems really he weird. Should be, he should be leading that, but mm -hmm. that's it. But yeah, it just written. rules is written. It's a sojutsu pattern void bike. Does count as a jet bike? It's just it's not a scimitar, scimitar jet bike. So yeah. it might seem petty, but it's not. It uh, doesn't seem like it's ambiguous. Like it, it is clear, rules was written. So we'll have to hopefully hold out for a FAQ, please. Yeah. And uh, see how it goes. We're never going to see him on the actual battlefield. <sighs> yeah. Using that right of war, at the very least. Yeah, definitely. That's true. Um, he also has. Like a plethora of special rules that mm. keep like it's a massive list. There's also got uh, Sarah the White Scars. I mean, they all have their. Um, in the first turn of combat, Jahat Khan always strikes first for any other model, but after Hammer of Wrath. 
So basically, let's just do that. Yeah, probably mm -hmm. safe to say. If any other model also automatically strikes first, then use the two models initially value to decide who or decide which of them will strike first should the two meet in combat. When Jagatai Jack Khan, Khan is included as part of an army, all friendly models with the Legion of Sari's White Scar special role uh, that are also part of the army gain the Scout special role now. Each. That's great, yeah. Army wide scout is they're in your face. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's that's a big push. Yeah. Like and with especially all with how fast the army's gonna be. You know? mm. And then getting that extra movement. Well not being able to maneuver around and get to where you want to be. Mm. You know? So is it now? The bleak wind. Jack attack con and any unit with the Legion of Sari special rule. A white scar special roll that joins gains the hit and run special roll. So again, I really see that doubling up that combo of everyone's going to be hitting and run. Everyone's going to have that ability to get into combat, dip out, really setting themselves up for counter attacks. It seems there's a lot of you know, in the army and in different sections. Yeah. So be ready to see a lot of it in the game. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Even like being held down by you know a sacrificial squad, Colin jumping in out with his squad really mess you up. You may see that you may see a unit tying one up just in time to get Hammer those units in there and then swap. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, the, the army could be played very well, very thematically using their special rules. So yeah, for sure. Uh, one that he doesn't have on foot that he does have is unmatched. Rider. Jagatai Khan automatically passes during dangerous terrain tests and when jinking receives a 3 plus jink cover save. Pretty good. 3 plus jink ain't nothing to, nothing to snuff at, that's for sure. No, 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 not at all. That I is mean, for sure. I mean, he does like that, he does like that invulnerable save in uh, outside of combat. So a 3 of jink basically really can, really can help him out. Yeah, definitely. And he does get Crusader as well on foot. Yep. Yep. Yeah, on foot, yeah, he does have Crusader. He also benefits uh, on foot or mounted from uh, lightning from the blue skies. So when held in reserve, you do not roll for Jagadari Khan or any unit he is considered to be part of while in reserve. Instead, the controlling player should note down the turn in which Jagadari Khan and his unit that he's joined will arrive before the battle begins. Uh, it does have a note, it cannot be the first turn, so. <laughs> Second turn, but hey, it's still pretty good. Uh, similarly, when the con arrives on the table by means of outflank, special rule, do not roll for the table that she arrives on. Instead, the controlling player should note down before the battle begins which side you want to come on. So that's pick your turn, pick your side, and you're in. Oh, that's pure evil. And with uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the other characters, was it Quinza? And his, I mean, you could do some nasty things. Where, like, you yeah. could have a lot of things coming on, just coming on turn two. There's yeah. no rolling. That's like, true. I, mean, yeah. I definitely can see the whole like kind of scope of white stars. This army is going to be in your face turn two. Yeah. Um, the heavy hitters might come turn three, but if you're using some of these special rules, turn two, like these, these guys could be in your face too. You got it. You got scout moves. You got scout knights. You got reserves coming in certain times no. so a lot of fast what moving you? units a lot of re-rolling of charges if you're able to go with that route yeah using that cyber hawk even something like, like the uh the falcon's claws they could you know they can keep a squad in place oh, you can. until turn two yeah. when he shows up and rolls in and uh, you know really yeah. messes up that squad it, i mean you're it's you're still gonna see the death star but you're gonna see it done in different ways yeah I think you're going to see a lot more army coherence. There's a lot of good options with, with mm. the army. Oh, and, definitely. And a different, a real different flavor. Yeah. Mm. What we're used to seeing, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think it'll change a lot of the way a game get played. Oh, and definitely. The way people are going to react to playing against the White yeah. Scars. Well, I don't, I don't, I think you're going to see a lot less of that uh, Spartan, Death Star Terminators, Primark in your face. 
You won't see that with this army for sure. No, mm -hmm. definitely. Even just with Khan's rules itself, he he's not he's not a slouch in combat at all. Mm -hmm. um, we did have a couple of the other guys do a roll off between Sanguinous and Khan, and mm -hmm. Khan beats them. They're fairly matched one on one. Yeah. Um, but like he seems more like he's gonna be you're gonna be planning your attacks. You're gonna really be taking advantage of that hit and run. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you're gonna be doing a lot of circling around your opponent. Mm -hmm. You get to pretty much dictate the field and where and when you want to attack. Yeah, totally agree. Having yeah. tons of bites and stuff like the mobility of this army is through the roof. I mean, with that being said, uh, just playing with my Raven Wing, they are still vulnerable. Bikes, yeah, they have that higher toughness, but I mean, you saw what your wolf did to my uh, to my Dark Angels, my Raven Wing, my bikes, and it just it. It hurt. It hurt. They're expensive. Like you're, you're going to be paying the points. Your numbers are going to be lower than your average opponent. But when you, if you play it right, you can hurt someone hard. Turn one, turn two. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, I just envision this army just circling, like you're saying earlier, mm. circling and picking their targets off, and yeah. the hidden runs and and the fast movement, and I, I just picture the way the army would be oh, actually definitely. on the field. That style of, of uh, tactics for yeah. the for the army, right? So. With that being said, I mean this army is not going to be like for the first time player just to jump in. Like this is this there's going to be some skill involved oh, to get sure. this this army sure. to play properly, oh, and and you really have to make sure that you're working on making all of those units work together as opposed to just having oh I just need that as a tax. That's a tax tactical knife. Mm -hmm. Tactical sword. No, that's that's that has to have its purpose, and they all got to work together to achieve achieve the same objective. So. Definitely agree. Um, I really think it'll all come down to uh, list building around a theme for your whole army. Yeah. Um, really trying to like combo up all these special rules because they you can layer them just like crazy oh. in this army. Um, I think it's going to be a patient man's army. You don't really want to just drive straight in and attack the person you see. I really think you, with mobility, you can pick and choose when and where. Yeah, and I selective. think that's going to be huge for this for this list for sure. Yeah, being yeah. selective, yeah. And I, I wouldn't necessarily like go headlong, but like take a unit, take that unit, focus on that unit. When it's done, you move on to the next mm -hmm. one. Don't spread yourself too thin because I think that's where you're going to see your weak the weaknesses of the white stars. Is if they get spread too thin. There's not enough of that stacking special abilities to gain the most momentum out of your. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's they're one hell of an army, that's for sure. Yeah, no, this will be great for anyone who's been waiting for white scars. I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. Uh, Con, it's been forever to wait for the like, actual rules. Con. The artwork in the book, it's beautiful. Um, yeah, I, I think it'll be waiting for rules. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Angels, twenty thirty. Yeah. No. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But yeah, no, like, I love this army. I hate painting white though. <laughs> There's ways. There's ways. There is ways. Yeah. Um, but it's gonna be interesting. I can't wait to see. Well, we're all great feel on the army. Yeah. Oh, this, so, this, and then we're gonna see. We're gonna see a lot of this army out there. So oh, yeah. I, I think it'll so be great. Too. It'll be great for that time. Yeah, and I mean, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen a white scars army. I mean, I had one for 40k, but that was a number of years ago. But uh, again, I don't, I don't, have, I don't see them too often. I can't wait no. to start seeing a lot of these on the, on the board. It's gonna be good for sure. Nice thing, yeah, with book eight coming, Blood Angels, White Scars are definitely going to uh, surface. You're gonna see a lot of these players coming out of the woodwork. They're gonna explode. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably explode is probably a problem. better word. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, like. Uh, the love for Sanguinius alone that I've seen out on out on the social media there. I mean, he won its beautiful model. I can't wait to see what they're gonna do oh. with Jagged Icon. Like yeah. I can't like I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Especially are they gonna do two models of him, one on foot, one on his boy jet bike? I think they're gonna have to. <laughs> have to, or yeah. do some sort of a some special way you can model him with either on top of the bike or not. Like maybe it'll come up with some Converting possibilities with pinning or magnets or something, but yeah. it's gonna be it, either way. I think the model's gonna be amazing. If it's anything like the artwork, oh I'll yeah, be, the, artwork, totally the artwork is amazing. Yeah, definitely. Can't, oh, ooh, the way he looks, he looks, he looks, he looks, he looks good. Yeah, yeah. So, so. 
Oh, that's going to be a great army to see on the field on. Yeah. So, be awesome. Um, that pretty much wraps up our White Scars review for Book 8. Uh, next episode, we're going to be looking at Demons of the Runestorm army list, which that army list already, looking at it, I don't want to let anything out of the bag, but crazy. Ugh. It's crazy. Although, it's going to change the way we play Heresy. Yeah. I think. yeah. It's, it's definitely different. Yeah. Different. So, yeah. Um, uh, thank you for tuning in for our second episode. Uh, episode three will be coming along shortly. Mm. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thanks.